Hi, I'm Alan Joyce, Director of Content Development for Wolfram Alpha, and I'm here to give an overview of new functionality in version 11 related to the Wolfram Languages Entity Framework and other built-in data from the Wolfram Knowledge Base. There are several major categories of improvements since version 10. First, the introduction of implicit entities and entity classes, allowing users to select entities by different criteria, including ranked property values, such as largest and smallest. Second, the ability to instantiate certain kinds of entities by specifying quantities, dates, or other characteristics, and the ability to create groups of entities that can be operated on as a single unit. Third, the ability to create custom user-defined entity types and entity collections and interact with them using standard Wolfram language entity framework syntax. And finally, a number of new data-related functions as well as new built-in entity types and other improvements and expansion of Wolfram knowledge base content. So first, implicit entities and entity classes. This frequently re requested functionality allows you to select entities from any built-in types using a simple but powerful syntax for filtering and ordering by combinations of properties. So here we have the semantic interpretation of mountains higher than 6,800 meters and its input form. Uh, apply entity lists to this implicit entity class and you get the list of entities that meet that selection criteria. And then that list can be operated on in customary ways, retrieve and convert property values, plot entities using built-in geographics functionality, and so on. Implicit entity class definitions can be quite complex as seen here, where we're selecting metallic elements within a certain density range and with a certain minimum melting point. And we can also make use of other recent additions such as contains any, between, greater than, take largest, and so on. Entity instance is another powerful new symbol which allows you to specify absolute quantities of certain kinds of entities. So here we see that you can compute properties of a specific mass of acetone. You can also instantiate a country or historical country entity using a date specification and retrieve properties including polygons that apply to that specific year. Or you can specify parameters for a particular physical system uh, here we have the default values for magnetic vector potential in a circular current loop, and here we have that entity instantiated with particular parameters. Entity groups are another new construct. By default, entity value retrieves values for each entity in a list, but by using entity group, you can retrieve one value for the extensive properties of a set of entities. Also new in version 11, we have custom entities uh, in the form of a new entity store object. This has been another frequently requested feature since the release of version 10. For those who are interested, there's code here to construct a data set of UFO sightings in the United States. But the main point is that using entity store, you can take that data set and instantly turn it into a new entity type that works with the standard functions in the entity framework, just like they do for built-in entities. You can retrieve lists of properties, uh, select random entities, and so on. Here, we even use an implicit entity class to select sightings by a visual type property and plot the results on a map. Here's one other example making use of a Wolfram curated entity store that lives in the new Wolfram data repository. This entity store actually contains three different entity types related to NSF grants awarded in 2015. One type for grants, one for investigators, and one for institutions. These can all be retrieved and registered in your local session and immediately used in all kinds of analysis and visualization. For example, here visualizing the distribution of grant sizes on a logarithmic scale. These are some of the most exciting pieces of brand new functionality in the entity framework. But of course, we've also continued to expand the number of data specific functions built into the language. Here's a view of some notable data functions that have been added since version 10. And here are some specific examples. Uh, for one, using mathematical function data to retrieve properties of a given function, uh, or for geogravity model data and geomagnetic model data. Uh, here, retrieving gravitational components at Big Ben, and here, visualizing the magnetic field over Canada. There are also a number of brand new built-in entity domains, uh, notably food, which currently includes nutritional and other data about more than 37,000 foods. Uh, here, for example, we have the semantic representation of a red delicious apple. 
And here we have the more than 500 data points that can be available for a given food. And of course, this domain works with natural language input as well as new symbols like entity group. Here we can find the Wolfram language representation of and the caloric content of a typical healthy breakfast. Another very exciting addition is human anatomy with data on tens of thousands of anatomical structures, including 3D geometry for many structures. Here we use the new anatomy plot 3D function to show a cutaway view of a human hand uh, highlighting four different bones. Or if human anatomy isn't fun enough for you, you can of course programmatically transform human and anatomical structures into a nice alien head. We've also added a great deal of data related to languages with new entity types for writing scripts and alphabets and alignment across entity types to enable some interesting cross-domain lookups. And we've continued to add and expand our collection in many other directions with data on everything from Pokemon here we have everything you might want to know about Pikachu, to yoga poses. And we're constantly adding new domains and expanding and improving connections between existing entity types with new improvements rolling out regularly. Thank you.